It, to just get older, you know, like grandparents treat their grandchildren different than they did. You know what I mean? It's a totally different story. Because they didn't learn, one thing they didn't learn, you can't make nobody do nothing. And if you get to twist, arm twisting, you can make more mistakes than you can. Uh, every mistake that you have is costlier than the things that you do right. You know what I mean? You can make two or three major mistakes in raising the kids and you could do 200 just perfect. And those three or four bad things will undermine anyway. So you have to let people know. Uh, I, th one thing about it, there's that old salesman thing. He said, if, you, if we're all looking at a, a group picture, who do you think that I'm looking for first? So I'm looking for myself, right? And everybody, everybody's, they're not looking for you. Well, I'm the chief, I'm the, and so what? Ain't nobody, hey, look, I'm looking for myself first. Everybody do that, right? Okay, so this is automatic. People want to feel good about themselves. They want to feel important. So you have to let people know that they're important. They're not going to stop you from getting where you're trying to go, but it's, you're important, an important part of this, this uh, structure here. You know, people just need that. They need to hear every now and then, man, that is pretty good. That's really something, okay. Then you have to let them know you need me too. You know, no, you have to let them know, look, I always say it, I, I don't mean it the way it comes out, but see, no matter what anybody, this is not only important, but it's exciting. I mean, look at here. It's so exciting, it's unbelievable. So the other day when I was in here talking about pain, that was true. That was, look, that was miserable pain. But I wasn't going to sit up here, oh, I sure do hurt. I said, I'm going to study pain. I wrote it all down. Study pain. Study its physical effects, its psychological effects. You want to study how to put pain at the forefront of what we're doing. You know what I mean? Pain, I mean, it actually hurts. You know what I mean? And so, when boss man, you'll see how I look today, when boss man hears Oh, he ain't, gonna, he ain't scared of pain. Well then, he not gonna have you hurt. Why? Because if you, everything he sent against you, if you adjust to it, especially pain, because this whole society is run by uh, pleasure and pain. Suppose you embrace pain. Oh, I can't help, I gotta hit me some pain today. And you operate well under that and he's watching you, he's going to cut out the pain because that pain accelerates your evolution. And when you study him, you know that. And he, when he know that you, I know you can't do nothing. And if you do, if our fingers start hurting, you're in trouble, boss man. Because I'm going to use that every time I want to do something. If I was going to go to number five, I'm going to go to number 12 because you didn't just mess with my finger. I'm not going to put up with it. Pretty soon, in other words, we're not helpless in this. We are not helpless. And I would go so far as to say is we're one of the only group, we're less helpless than anybody else. Although we have having a lot of uh, controversy, and this thing is fun. It is fun, you know. And then it's all other as we move into another arena, we headed in a long distance, a big shot. But what we've done around here, uh, of course, we have to get somebody, move somebody in there, move somebody in there, carpet and stuff like that. But those are just normal things. Those are normal things. But we pay eight taxes 
And other people haven't been here as long as we have, and they haven't. It's, so now you got to remember, we got this far with the whole team against us. The whole system against us. Okay. That means we have to learn how to use everything that the system does against us to help build ourselves. It, that's, uh, that's a little bit, that uh, takes a little bit of work. Okay. So, people object, object to me. Yeah. So, people object to me, not the mission or the vision all the time. They do. This is Imam Musa. Have you ever heard that? Well, no, we, 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 we always cut the barriers down, what we have any charge of. Even we invented, and we're still in the process of invented, a, a whole story, a line about why other people did certain things. Right. Because we want to make it easy. Right. See, look, we in, this is a big show. You could turn the what's the name on just a bit. This is a big show. You know what I mean? And we have to try to remove or lower the hurdles and the barriers to brotherhood and friendship. That's our job. Technically, it's everybody's job, but everybody is not. Uh, suited up for the task. Uh, let's put it that way. Okay. So in this thing about um, management and leadership, one of the leadership trainers said that 50% of people uh, give up uh, and they give up on their own dream. 50% of the people they give up on you, they give up on their dream, they give up on all of that stuff. Then it says 75% of the people have not arrived, so they're frustrated in pursuit of their dream. So it's saying, if people, if you ask people, you got a vision, you got a dream, place you want to go, okay. So 50% of the people haven't even gotten close to those uh, uh, those dreams and those visions. And so they build up some animosity and call it hatred. Uh, and then out of the other half that's left over, 75% of them have not arrived at their specific dream either. And really, that arriving at your vision or your dream, that is a big deal. Because uh, uh, they did a survey at Yale, 1952. And at that, in those days, the people were all the same. They were upper middle class white men, right? And they made a study on goals and what have you. And they said, they came back in 1972 and studied all those people. They found out that 3% of the people had written goals. And those 3% of those people, they're all the same. They came from upper middle class, white background, mostly male. That 3% was worth more, now they're using physical worth, more, worth more and more fulfilled than the whole 97% that was left over. 
because they had specific, written, clear goals. This goal that I have is clear, right? And I've added into that, that means the, the, the goal or the clarity is called goal clarity. And not only that, is uh, how much is it going to cost to get there? You know, like uh, how, uh, that's called goal commitment. How much commitment do you need, right? to get to that place that you want to go. That's goal commitment, you know. And so they found that 3% of the people was worth more than the whole 97% of the people because they had clear, written goals, concise goals. They had goal clarity, you know what I mean? They also had added in the cost. You know, how much is this going to cost? Or goal difficulty. How much difficulty do I have to go through to get there? And then not only that, we deal with goal difficulty is not a difficulty, but an opportunity. Because anything that you go to, you automatically evolve. Yeah, so it's not... Man, look at here. I'm telling you, I was just going over the other day the stuff that I've been dealing, that I had to deal with, and I looked at uh, everything that that I had to deal with uh, when I was at Pine Grove Forestry Camp when I was 17, 18, yeah. And I got sent down the hill. Down the hill, meant they took you from the forestry camp which was in jail, a kind of a privilege, but it wasn't that, uh, to a more secure institution. And I'll show you all some of my old pictures. I see why I got sent down, because everybody else was mean. We took pictures, they'd be mean, and I'm always with a big smile. And that's what the effect I was having, although I was the youngest guy, out of all of my friends, we had a good workout team and on and on and on. And you would think I was happy to be there, you know. Well, I got to be here so there's no, sense, there's no sense me being sad or stupid. And I learned a lot at the forestry. I learned that I like forestry. I like the woods. You know, I just like them. And I learned that by, if I wouldn't have been there, I wouldn't have known. You know, that, hey, man, I like... Uh, I can sit in the middle of these trees at lunch break, and uh, it's a nice, serene feeling. And all. So they sent me down the hill. The guy that took me down the hill was uh, Vandy Hine. Vandy Hine was one of the, call him the officer or what have you. When he took me down to the PSI, Preston School of Industry, he told the people, this is a good kid. What up? He couldn't figure out why the lieutenant, the camp commander had me sent down the hill. Well, actually, I kept everything alive, you know, like uh, when we finish a hard day's work, I might say, uh, yeah, Mr. Vandy Hine, boy, I'm telling you, we about 10 minutes early, I think we could, enjoy a couple of Cokes, not just think that we got all, it wasn't like to drink a Coca-Cola, them little bitty six ounce ones that they used to have in them old hard glass bottles. It was only 10 cents a piece. Yeah, Vandy Hine, I bet you, boy, look at here. We could uh, show and joy, because you're going way out to work and you're passing stores and all that. You're not in, in Every morning you go out to work and you see people and you go through towns. In those days they were small towns. But anyway, well, Reams, ain't nobody got no, I ain't got no money to, I said, well, boss man, see that old guy there, he from L.A. I bet you he got $2 in his pocket. I know he ain't supposed to have it, but he, you know, in other words, just having a good time. Yeah. 
then he come in. Yeah, man, y'all gonna have to pay me back though, you know. And so almost every day we'd get off a few minutes early and we'd stop uh, whatever and get a, you know, the whole bus get a, get a, so probably somebody was telling the camp commander, this guy is too friendly with this police. And he made that police take me down the hill. And he was trying to figure out all the way we was driving down to Preston. He was, I wonder why he's doing that. He don't cause no trouble, you know. And I didn't say nothing. I said, he probably noted uh, we're getting along too well. No, that's the exact thing that was, this is too much fun and ain't nobody mad. Or, you know, at least we making it easy for everybody. He didn't want that. The camp commander said, no, these niggas are supposed, you here for punishment and we gonna punish you. And you gonna be mad and sad. You're not gonna be just laughing all the time and going messing with everybody and keeping everybody stirred up and happy, you know, no, we can't have that. Okay. We answered the question, what does the system do to you? The, t the system wants to frustrate you, wants to make you sad, wants to make you close up on everybody and everything. And the system wants you to feel like the target, although, okay, we're the target but we're a meal ticket for everybody. We've always we've been that all along. A meal ticket means people can work out anything they want with the system, and the system will let them off just by being against me. Okay. Well, in doing what we do, that's a part of what we do. The way we talk, the way we act, draw as much heat on us is we can stand, that's what it's designed to do, right? So we can't get no more heat than we already get, that we're gonna go out to get it. How to punk the FBI, how to da 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 da. That's that making them people mad, right? So you can't blame them for whatever they do because you're bringing the heat on yourself. We're not trying to avoid heat. That, the thing is, People want life to be smooth and easy, but if you you running up hills and you going through, you doing that kind of stuff, you get tougher and smarter than you do if just cruising along. And that's the reason I tell the brothers about government jobs. I say you won't be, you won't.